Part 1 of the Amgun review of the Springfield Armory Hellion. I was excited when I saw that Springfield Armory was going to import the HS product VHS-2 to the United States. Minor tweaks to suit the American market were overshadowed by the idea of a high quality, fully and perfectly mirrored ambidextrous 556 bullpup carbine with a 16 inch barrel in a package with an overall length of only 28 and a quarter inches. Why the obsession with a long barrel in a short package and perfectly mirrored controls? For the ambidextrous optimal use of cover, perfectly mirrored controls means the ambidextral gunfighter can trust bilateral transfer of skill from one hand to the other. That is, dynamic, unconscious ambi operation is not stymied and one isn't taken out of the zone because the controls behave differently left and right handed. And short overall length means you can get up close to cover and move from one side to the other with the muzzle up. All while still maintaining the ballistic advantage of a longer barrel. Two American bullpup rifles have largely satisfied the ambidextral gunfighter's needs, the Desert Tech MBR and the Keltec RDB. Can the Croatian-made Hellion outperform these two offerings? Let's start with the ambi controls. The mag release. The Hellion uses an AK-like paddle behind the mag wheel for press and strip operation. It is a reliable technique, but I do prefer to have the ability to release the mag while the support hand is reaching for a fresh mag. The MDR does this with an AR style trigger finger positioned ambi magazine buttons, though these are pretty stiff on the MDR. The RDB's crudely simple and supremely efficient spring steel magazine catch is ambidextrous and supports trigger hand back of the thumb operation while reaching for your spare magazine. My order of preference is RDB, MDR, and Hellion. The bolt release. Many reviewers have mentioned the Hellion's bolt release as a thumb and forefinger pinch operation, often with some sexual innuendo tossed in. I don't regard this as the proper means of releasing the boat. I think it's cleaner upon mag insertion to just slide slap your hand across the release for a pretty fast movement that sends your support hand back to the handguard as quickly as possible, all without disturbing your muzzle up on target sight picture. Done this way, it is almost as fast as the MDR's thumb press release and quite a bit better than the RDB's over the buttstock forefinger thumb downward press release. The MDR bolt release, like the Tavor X95, is number one, Hellion number two, and the RDB a distant third. Safety selector ergos. The Hellion features a short throw ambidextrous safety. However, the safety lever is positioned at a slight upwards angle that is annoyingly anti-ergonomic. From a muzzle down, low ready position, it's not too bad, but for muzzle up, I found it quite frustrating. I wish that this was one of the areas where Springfield Armory Americanized the VHS-2 by aligning the lever to be more parallel with the barrel. The MDR and RDB safeties are so much better. Of the three, I prefer the RDB short 30 degree throw and very positive detents, with the MDR number two and the Hellion last. One feature I do like on the Hellion safety is the ability to engage the safety with the hammer down. Charging handle. The Hellion features a very nice ambi charging handle that can be swung out and operated from either side for perfectly mirrored ambi operation. When not being used, it is tucked well out of the way. The MDR uses dual charging handles that are a bit easier to get hold of, but do protrude outside the rifle a bit. The RDB does not have a true ambi charging handle, but rather one that can be positioned for either left hand or right hand use. Although for getting hold of it, I do prefer the RDB shape over the other two. I'm not a fan of the AR forward assist. 
It's not because I don't like the idea of being able to help the bolt forward like you might with a reciprocating charging handle, but I do not like the implementation on the AR. The AR forward assist obstructs ambient operation of the charging handle and it can come in contact with body armor and inject a malfunction. The Hellion has a clever, unobtrusive forward assist built right into the non-reciprocating charging handle. Just push down on the tab and now the non-reciprocating charging handle is connected to the gas piston op rod. No ambient instructions and the risk of injecting a mouth seems pretty slim. Great engineering. Overall, I prefer the Hellion's charging handle with the MDR second and the RDB third. Trigger. The Hellion features a good, if heavy, trigger. Not bad by typical bullpup standards, but well arrears of the MDR's lighter and crisper trigger, and even further behind the RDB's excellent, by any standard, trigger. The RDB is well ahead of the field here with the MDR number two, Hellion third. Gas adjustment. The Hellion has two gas settings, normal and suppressed. The RDB, with over a dozen settings, is able to refine the gas setting for best and gentlest operation. The MDR comes in second with six settings with the Hellion well back of the field for tuning the rifle to your particular cartridge. The Hellion gas system is very easy to clean, but just doesn't equal the RDB and MDR. Without this tunability, it's going to be a little bit harsher to shoot than the RDB. Weight. While all of the bullpups are heavier than the typical six poundish AR, the short overall length compensates somewhat in regards to the compactness of one's loadout. Moreover, the weight distribution of all bullpups allows for sustainable one-handed operation and sustained up manipulations of the firearm. The RDB is the lightest bullpup at 7 pounds. The Hellion comes in second place at 8 pounds with the heavy 8.3 pound MDR in third. Top heavy vertical balance. Given the Hellion's height over grip, that 8 pounds feels a bit top heavy. The RDB sits much lower in the hand so that if you need to dive into cover while laying the rifle flat on its side, the rifle is far less likely to turn turtle or rip itself from your hand. The MDR is kind of top heavy too, but not as much as the Hellion. Advantage RDB. Horizontal balance for one-handed and ambi transition. Doing Mantis Laser Academy drills, we found that the Hellion supported muzzle-up manipulation of the charging handle. Almost impossible with the AR. And the AR was very tiring to maintain a muzzle-up posture through multiple drills. Even shooters with lots of experience on ARs earned better scores with the Hellion on the Mantis Laser Academy hunt drill. But the RDB being one lighter is even easier to operate one-handed, so it does this metric, leaving the Hellion and MDR in a tie for second. The horizontal or buttstock to muzzle balance is what makes a bullpup unbelievably quick handling compared to the muzzle heavy AR. Although I prefer a four step ambi transition with bullpups, it is definitely possible to transition the pocket grip directly from one hand to the other. This direct transfer is preferred by my son, and it is actually how we did it in paintball. The pistol grip. The Hellion includes a BCM gunfighter pistol grip and can be changed to any compatible AR grip. This is a big customization advantage over the MDR and RDB. However, the RDB's grip is higher up into the rifle, so the weight of an optic has much less leverage on your hand. It is 3.18 inches below the pick rail compared to 4 and a quarter inches for the Hellion. I think the better choice for grip would be the BCM Gunfighter 3.0 KD, Kyle DeFore, the shorty version. This would reduce the Hellion's overall height by eliminating unneeded length. Amgun recommended for ARs too. So the RDB is lighter and feels a lot less top heavy than the Hellion or MDR.
The RDB grip is also thinner at 1.1 inches versus the slightly thicker palm swell of the Hellion and MDR, giving the RDB a higher grip ratio for better point shooting, if that applies to rifles. Overall, I score the Hellion number one for the included BCM and AR changeable grip, with the RDB in second for its thin grip and the MDR third. But for grip positioning, the RDB is far superior for the top side weight having far less leverage on the shooter's hand. Ejection. The Hellion features side ejection that can be set up to eject left or right side. Paired with a buttstock flare that deflects brass away from the shooter's face when shooting on the same side as the ejection port. But the RDB's downward ejection is the standard for ambidextrous use, with the MDR forward eject and the Hellion tied for distant second. Ejection is where all of the other bullpups, like the AUG or the Tavor, really fail the ambidextral gunfighter. Durability. While we do not yet have the same number of rounds through the Hellion as we do the RDB or MDR, it does seem to be sturdy and well made. At this point I think the Hellion is number one with the MDR in second and the RDB third, being that it had a broken firing pin and a loosened barrel extension lock nut. Reliability cycle. Surprisingly, the RDB at 3,000 rounds is proving to be astonishingly reliable for cycling. No failures to fire ex or extraction or ejection issues. It even continued to cycle with Frontier blown primers that typically locked up ARs. It didn't even quit when the firing pin broke, only discovering the problem on cleaning. It did, however, fail when the barrel extension lock nut came loose. The MDR is second once we learned how to keep the ejector tray clean and dry lubed. The Hellion, with far fewer rounds down range, has had three cycling malfunctions. Two failures to extract and one failure to eject. Two of the failures were with 55 grain Hornady Frontier and one was with 68 grain Frontier. I wonder if the lack of gas system tunability cost the Hellion here. Going into this review, I expected to report that the Hellion was the most reliable, but at this point, I rate the RDB number one, MDR number two, and the Hellion number three. Malfunction handling. The Hellion with its simple, standard side ejection is far and away the best for malfunction handling of these three. Almost as good as an AR. The MDR, with its ability to quickly yank free the ejection port cover, is number two. The RDB comes in a distant third. Basically, a serious malfunction means field stripping the RDB. The RDB, if it had a pop-up dust cover receiver, it would be competitive. Chamber check. The Hellion is AR-like simple for doing chamber checks. The MDR a distant second with the RDB an abysmally distant get out your flashlight and mirror third. Barrel to Picatinny rail connection. How solid is the lockup between the optic mount and the barrel with which it must align? The Hellion has a lot of distance between the barrel and the Picatinny rail. Moreover, there is a lot of structural polymer between the barrel and the optic, and the lockup between the pick rail and the receiver is pretty sketchy. It has a nice latching system, but with a forward catch that ties in with what looks like a front sight dovetail. Maybe this is battle proven and well engineered, but it looks sketchy as shit to me. The RDB with the steel ring connection between the pick rail and the barrel, as well as the MDR's rail to barrel connection are confidence inspiring. I rate the MDR number one for barrel to rail connection. The RDB a close second with the Hellion a very distant third, unless some engineer can explain the Hellion's engineering here. Pick rail height above bore. The Hellion has a pretty high sight above bore of 3.65 inches. The RDB is half an inch lower. This compares to the typical AR at around two and three quarters inches. Picatinny rail. Because the Hellion is already tall and the typical cheek weld sits pretty low compared to the pick rail, 
you need to mount any optic low on the rail. Even a small LPVO like the Leupold VX Freedom just barely clears the top of the pick rail when properly mounted for optimal cheek weld and to co-witness with the irons. It would be beneficial for the Hellion if this rail were scalloped to provide just an extra bit of clearance. Most reviewers seem to be testing with pretty tall optics mounts that not only exacerbate the Hellion's top heaviness, but would shift most shooters from a cheek weld to a beard weld. The Hellion needs the center line of the optic mounted about 8 tenths of an inch above the rail, whereas the RDB needs it to be 1.4 inches above the rail. So you could fit an optic with a larger objective or eyepiece on the RDB without needing high rings and a cheek riser. The AR typically needs the optic uh, 1.5 inches above the rail. Iron sights. The Hellion with its integrated pop-up iron sets the standard. No irons are included with the RDB or MDR. The Hellion irons are nicely made but will punch you in the eye socket if you are doing a turkey neck cheek weld, that is with your neck extended up against a buttstock flare. The iron sights feature a very cool rotating diopter and a well-defined front post so I really wanted to like them. But after repeatedly getting punched in the orbital socket, I am starting to sour on the Hellion. With a Leupold VX Freedom Pigplex optic mounted, I often use the scope with the rear sight popped up, a co-witness advantage, to keep from developing a Hellion diopter flinch. I think if I could tune the gas system more precisely, like the RDB, the recoil impulse could be tamed just a bit or just enough that the orbital socket taps might be butterfly kisses rather than fizzing. Otherwise, I think I'd be inclined to remove the rear sight. Sling Attachments The Hellion features several sling attachment points, including matching left and right side quick release sockets. I had high hopes for the rear buttstock rings for creating a paracord traveler that I found so beneficial on the RDB. But those rings are just too far to the rear, thus allowing the rifle to dangle too low and out of reach. These rings need to be moved forward to about the same spot as the RDBs. The ability of using a single point sling in a dynamic ambidextrous operation puts the RDB at number one with the Hellion and MDR left squabbling over number two. Barrel. The Hellion seems to have a well-built hammer forged barrel. Maybe not as nice as my BCM's chrome line barrel, but the Hellion does perform much better than the RDB with its .568 inch pencil barrel. I found minimal zero difference between 55 grain and 68 grain bullets with the Hellion, unlike the RDB's puzzling 32 minute of angle zero change between 55 grain and 72 grain when fitted with a flash hider minimal change if I run the RDB with a bare muzzle. The Hellion and MDR get top honors, with the MDR maybe getting an advantage for its ease of barrel replacement and caliber change. The RDB is a distant third. The Hellion and RDB both feature 1 to 7 twist rates, so we'll probably prefer heavier 5.56 bullets. Field Strip None of these bullpup rifles are as easy to field strip as an AR. The Hellion is pretty easy to field strip without tools, and it is very easy to do a semi detailed field strip and pull out the trigger pack. The MDR is second in ease of field stripping, with the RDB third. Length of pull The RDB and MDR both have 14.5 inch length of pull, perfect and able to work around body armor during ambi transitions. The Hellion with a 16.5 inch length of pull, with buttstock fully collapsed, is rather excessive, but I found that I needed to extend the buttstock to 17.5 inches length of pull to keep from getting smacked in the eye by the folded rear sight. This is getting a bit excessive and will be a hindrance when doing ambi transitions around body armor. What about the Tavor X95? Not ambi unless you want to get smacked in the face by hot brass. That is, it is configurable either right or left handed, not dynamically ambi for optimal use of cover. The Tavor does have a better connection between the optic and the barrel, and the Tavor's integrated iron sights don't smack you in the face. 
The Tavor's four position gas regulator has more options than the Hellion's two positions. The Tavor's sight to rail barrel connection is more robust. And it weighs about the same as the Hellion. Same length of pull, same trigger bar setup, cost the same. Heavy, a stretch, adequate trigger, and expensive. Until the Tavor is a true ambi rifle, we won't bother with a detailed review of the IWI bullpup. Price. The Hellion MSRP is $2,000, which is twice that of the RDB at $1,000 and a bit less than the more exotic MDR's $2,500. So given that you could buy two RDBs for the price of one Hellion, the RDB is number one, Hellion number two, and the MDR at number three. Is the Hellion worth $2,000? If not, at what price would it be competitive? That is the question we'll look at in the next video on the Hellion. In the meantime, check out the Amgun Hellion page at amgun.com slash ambidextral dash rifle slash Hellion. The link is also in the description.